Today we're going to look at the legendary American knife known as the Arkansas Toothpick. Hi folks, Matt Eason here, Scholar Gladiator. Now over the years we've done various videos looking at the Bowie knife, or Bowie knife if you prefer me to um, say it that way. And this is commonly known as a predominantly single edge with a clipped point or clipped back, sometimes dropped point, uh, so asymmetrical blade. And obviously this is associated with the legend that is Jim Bowie, or Bowie. And um, fundamentally this is probably one of the most famous knives that has existed in history and it's usually defined as being this sort of asymmetrical blade either with a clipped point or a drop point uh, with one primary edge on the front and having a cross guard. They can come with various types of hilt, in fact various types of blade, and various sizes but these days they're widely known as bowie or bowie knives. Now there is another type of related knife which doesn't get very much attention and it is double edged with a symmetrical blade and this has been widely termed the Arkansas toothpick. Now there's many theories about the names for that, we'll come back to that in a second. And it has also been claimed that this was an invention of James Black, who was involved in the evolution, should we say, and development of Bowie or Bowie's knife. So he was a knife maker um, operating in the 1820s, 1830s and thereafter. He was born in about 1800 and um, he obviously came up with various knife designs and some are associated with him. But, you know, a lot of this wasn't necessarily written down until later, and so we're not 100% certain whether he did come up with this, um, with this knife design. <clears throat> and it should also be pointed out that while it's often described in knife books and uh, weapon books and histories as these being invented, neither of these really were radically new designs. The fact is that a knife, uh, whether it had a concealed tang or a full width tang, with a cross guard, with a blade of approximately this shape, had actually been around since medieval times um, and you know even the drop points have some similarity to certain types of early medieval or dark age sacks or sayax uh, knives and even with cross guards we find things like this in 14th and 15th century uh, Europe. So while we could say they maybe kind of reinvented the wheel to some extent in the 19th century, not saying they necessarily copied earlier ones, there's definitely earlier knives around which are similar to these and this is true of the Arkansas toothpick as well which in its fundamental features of having, whether it's a coffin handled grip or any other type of grip, a cross guard of various sorts, so a distinctive cross guard, and a double edged symmetrical blade, this basic setup is what would be known in Europe as a dirk. <laughs> it's actually not very different to earlier Georgian era 18th century naval dirks, for example. Even in some extent, it's similar to certain types of medieval quillon dagger that were around as well. So indeed, while the exact look of an Arkansas toothpick may to some degree sort of be a new invention, let's say in the 1830s um, or late 1820s, there were other types of dagger that were around. In fact, if we go to hunting knives and hunting daggers being used in British India, you can find some very th similar things to this. And as I say, naval dirks being carried by junior officers on board ships in the British and French and American navies, quite similar to this as well. So, fundamentally, the Arkansas toothpick is not really especially different uh, to lots of other daggers which have been around and were around at the same time. But, it is differentiated in appearance from the asymmetrical blade of the Bowie or Bowie knife. And these were popular amongst certain duelists. What advantages do they offer? Well, some people would say that they offer obviously the advantage of having two edges and a symmetrical point, which means in certain situations, this is gonna be a more effective stabbing tool. It will penetrate clothing more easily than a blunt backed blade, for example, because you have more friction with a rounded or squared back. In many cases, we find that the uh, bevels on the false edge of uh, drop points and uh, clipped points aren't always sharpened and they would experience more friction going through a target when uh, thrusting than something like the Arkansas toothpick would have. Additionally in combat, so being used for dueling, and bear in mind this is a period I think where people, a lot of people have the perception of firearms being prevalent, but in many uh, American and Canadian uh, towns and places you weren't allowed to walk around with firearms without a good reason 
And the fact is we know from the historical records lots of people got into duels and got into fights with these and it wasn't always a legal matter, sometimes it was financial, sometimes they couldn't afford a pistol for example. So they might own a shotgun but they don't walk around with a shotgun, they own a shotgun or a rifle for hunting or protection when they're out in the wilderness but they have one of these on their belt. So if they happen to go to a, a pub or an inn, uh, a tavern and they get into an argument, this is the weapon that they have on them, they're not carrying a firearm around. So, for numerous reasons, places like New Orleans became famous for dueling with knives. And in fact, some fencing masters even turned their hand to teaching people how to fence and how to fight with knives using fencing principles more um, scientifically and, and uh, effectively than just uh, shanking each other repeatedly. So these did become dueling weapons, so much so that in fact there were certain laws in 19th century um, uh, American states and sometimes individual cities and towns that forbade the carrying and wearing of certain types of things. The Bowie knife or Bowie knife is occasionally mentioned in legal things and in fact until recently, until about 10 years ago I think in Texas, uh, you theoretically weren't supposed to carry a Bowie knife around people probably did because they'd forgotten it was a law and that was actually revoked not that long ago and similarly in other parts for example I think in Alabama I think it was um, uh, illegal to walk around wearing an a Arkansas toothpick as it's named the implication being one of these uh, and these were used for dueling. Having two edges incidentally used in dueling does give you some advantages because you can cut with the back edge and the front edge um, so, so you know you could say it's more effective for certain techniques. So these knives were carried for dueling, they were carried by ne'er-do-wells, they weren't always carried by honourable people for self-protection or hunting purposes, they were sometimes used as assassins weapons and in places like Italy they have had different laws for double-edged knives than for single-edged knives. Now this particular example is made by Windlass and it is part of it's a, I think it's a new one actually in the Battle Cry range. So I'll stick a link down below if you're interested in this particular one. Uh, Battle Cry is a uh, black bladed as you've seen there, in fact just generally blackened fittings, uh, versions of uh, popular historical edged weaponry made by Windlass, uh, sold through um, primarily through MRL and Atlanta Cutlery in the United States and various other um, resellers uh, also in Europe and other places as well. Uh, these are made very ruggedly. Uh, they are, I think, 1080 uh, steel um, for the blade. So carbon steel blade, sharp on both sides, nice and sharp. I'm not going to touch that to demonstrate because there'll be blood. Um, cross guard made of steel, blackened to match the blackened blade. Obviously, if you wanted to, you could polish off this blade and make it bright. It's just blackened because, uh, you know, that's part of the product line uh, concept. Uh, steel ferrule, steel butt cap or pommel if you want to call it that and it is peened at the end there, riveted at the end. So it is a through tang all the way through, peened solid at the end and it is a very robust piece and it comes complete with a um, sheath or scabbard which is very nicely stitched down the back, good stiff uh, leather with blued steel chape and uh, locket and belt hook and historically correct instead of a modern push stud little uh, button steel button that goes through a hole there which is completely historically accurate so if you're doing reenactment or something like that um, this is perfectly historically accurate for most of the middle of the 19th century uh, America um, and things like this were carried in Europe as well and in places out outreach parts of the British Empire French Empire Spanish Empire so on and so forth so you could have found this in lots of parts of the world and um, uh, Windlass have done a fantastic job. Obviously I work with Windlass on the Royal Armouries line. I've been to their factory, watched that video if you haven't done already. They've got amazing craftsmen and these are solidly tested and very solid things. And I will be doing a, a future test with this. I'll chop up a load of stuff and do a physical test, test its strength and things like that. But here's a first look uh, review of it, which is a really nice uh, um, new addition to the Battle Cry line, which is a growing line and has uh, been really popular. So back to the Arkansas toothpick. One thing I wanted to know is where did the name for the Arkansas toothpick come from? And is it correct? Because you often see things repeated in history books and when I go and look at the primary source material, when I go and look at the historical source material, it doesn't always agree with what historians have repeated each other saying. Is it that this double-edged type of dagger was known as the Arkansas toothpick in contrast to the Bowie knife 
um, that was an asymmetrical blade here. What evidence did I turn up for that? Well, one of the first things I turned up was an 1897 newspaper, British newspaper, describing how different people in different parts of America had different nicknames. And so some of these are quite amusing. It says, uh, the imagination has been considerably stretched in providing nicknames for the people of the various states of America. And it gives some examples. It says that apparently people from Alabama are known as lizards. <laughs> people in California are known as gold hunters. Makes sense. People in Colorado are known as rovers. In Connecticut, they're known as wooden nutmegs. <laughs> In Delaware, they're known as muskrats. In Florida, they're known as fly up the creeks. But here's the thing, in Arkansas, the people were nicknamed toothpicks. So this is 1897, so it's interesting. I was searching for the term American toothpick and instead of finding a reference to daggers, I found the fact that apparently in 1897, people from Arkansas were actually known as toothpicks. Now I came across another historical reference which says that people in the area were known for picking their teeth with their pen knives. Now what's a pen knife? You might think of a Swiss Army knife in a modern context, but historically it was literally a small folding knife, a bit like a Swiss Army knife, that you sharpened your pen with, your quill originally, and laterly, I guess, a pencil. Um, and so it was a small folding knife, and people used to pick their teeth with this, which was considered bad manners in a lot of parts of the world, but apparently in Arkansas people did this, and so they were known as uh, toothpicks. So there is an idea that maybe the name Arkansas Toothpick was partly a joke, alluding to the fact that people used to pick their teeth with their knives, and it was quite funny when they had a massive knife, because that's like, it's a bit like Crocodile Dundee, that's not a knife, this is a knife, uh, this is kind of their version of a toothpick. Now when looking for more 19th century references to Arkansas toothpicks I came across this cool description for the Sussex Advertiser, British newspaper, of 1858. Some nice and early. So it says, I heard a crash in the bushes on the opposite side of the brook and looking up I saw the head of a large grey wolf and his grisly brisket fronting me. The, open in, the opening in the said head disclosing a rather uncomfortable case of dentistry, the details of which crunched together in a way demonstrating a remarkably keen appetite. I was stunned for a moment by the sight, but only for a moment. I had my matchbox in my hand and seizing a dozen or so of them, fired them off. The head drew an inch or two back into the bushes, but the growl increased hugely. I had an old straw hat on my head. This I took off and set on fire. What a great idea. Set your own hat on fire. Um, as it blazed up, I rose and approached the wolf who backed out um, all but his nose. I could still see his fiery eyes blazing at me. As the hat burned, I managed to get out my knife, which is no common jock to leg. I don't know what that word is, uh, but an Arkansas toothpick of some nine inches length of blade. So that's very interesting because it describes whatever the shape of it is, it describes a nine inch blade. This one's bigger incidentally, but there we go. So nine inches was considered fairly large. Um, this affected, I flung the remains of my flaming caster um, at Wolfie's nose and shouted as loud as my lungs would tolerate. The way the fellow crashed through the bushes was a sight to be seen and the manner this fellow persevered in the opposite direction was a lesson to pedestrians generally. <laughs> Uh, what a nicely written little thing. But basically, we've got a vague mention there of an Arkansas toothpick. We don't know exactly what type of knife it was, whether it was this type or another type, with a nine inch blade. So I also found a vague reference in 1897 in the Irish News and Belfast Morning News. And it, it's talking about someone who had a load of adventures in the Wild West, essentially. So this is 1897, so it's referring back to the 1860s, 1867, it says here. So, uh, and he refers to someone's equipment being uh, an eight inch revolver, an Arkansas toothpick, and jack boots. Uh, so again, we've got a reference to an Arkansas toothpick. We don't know exactly what type of knife that was, and a revolver. And these, of course, a knife and a revolver are standard Wild West sidearms. So here's a really interesting and quite precise reference. This is from the Bury Free Press, and this is 1859. Again, fairly early uh, reference. And it's referring to a group of people on, on his travels and he says all carry knives, generally Arkansas toothpicks, the blades being longer than the handles, this is important, the blades being longer than the handles only allow three parts to be shut. So that means 
to be shut, that means these are folding knives. So specifically here, the Arkansas toothpick that he's describing, or at least that he thinks is an Arkansas toothpick, is talking about a folding knife where only three parts, I think that means three quarters of the total length, is able to be closed into the handle because the blade's longer than the handle, which he's just mentioned. Um, over the point, a scabbard is carried, which when in expectation of a, of a row, an argument, they take off and begin picking their teeth uh, with the point. Uh, preparatory to opening the full length of the blade, which is only resorted to should the row become a general one, in other words, a massive fight. So this is, a, this is the type of often what we refer to as Bowie knife that is folding. It's a locking folding knife where the blade being longer um, protrudes beyond the handle and therefore it needs to be put in a scabbard. We actually encounter these quite a lot in the antique world. That doesn't sound like an Arkansas toothpick like this type of dirk here. That sounds like a smaller folding Bowie knife. Now, funnily enough, I found another corroborating thing. Bear in mind, these are British sources, so they may be misunderstanding something. I don't know. But this is from the Newcastle Chronicle newspaper from 18, 12, 26th of December, uh, so Boxing Day, 1896. Okay, so, and it says, a Bowie knife of a peculiar fashion and also this Bowie versus Bowie. I say Bowie because I'm British. British people say Bowie. I understand that in Texas they say Bowie. The name in Scot it's a Scottish name, Bowie, is, is said Bowie, Bowie in Scotland. But anyway, um, a Bowie knife of a peculiar fashion wherein the blade shuts up in the handle is known as an Arkansas toothpick as evidence in the following lines. And in quotations, straight away leaped the valiant Slingsby into armour of Seville with a strong Arkansas toothpick screwed in every joint of steel. Um, so it's interesting. So in 1896, here's another source that believes that an Arkansas toothpick is actually the folding type of Bowie knife. However, here we have a contrary piece of evidence. This is from 1838 and this is from the Northern Liberator. Um, and it says, uh, there are several kinds of knives knives in use. A narrow blade and one about 11 inches long, that's about the same length as uh, this one incidentally, uh, is an Arkansas toothpick. And then it goes on to talk about something irrelevant. But that's, that, in that case, it's saying that it's a narrow blade. Yeah, I guess it's narrower relative to its length than a typical Bowie knife. Um, and uh, about 11 inches long. So it, it's fairly long kind of. So yeah, so that would seem to corroborate in that case that what that person considers an Arkansas toothpick is one of these. And it should be pointed out that 1838 is much nearer in period to when these originate than those 1890s sources, which might be, maybe there's been a terminology shift between the 1830s and the 1890s in what that name actually refers to. Maybe it didn't always mean the same weapon to the same you know, across across the decades, maybe it shifted slightly. Now here's a super interesting source, the Pictorial Times, printed in London in 1844. So we're in the right period for when these were devised. And this says, um, uh, a pleasant chapter of which is talking about a book, a pleasant chapter of which is uh, succeeded by a most American array of Bowie knives and other knives, which of course includes the Arkansas toothpick, the Missouri measure, the Alabama meat axe, and the other shapes most admired and patronized by transatlantic senators. So here we've got several names given, Arkansas toothpick, Missouri measure, and Alabama meat axe, and they are described as different shapes of Bowie knife. Uh, so therefore, well, we don't know exactly what those shapes, at least I don't know exactly what those shapes are. It might be that this shape, you know, a drop point or a clip point, different, subtly what we now just refer to them all as Bowie knives, it might be that different shapes of blade, maybe one was a Missouri measure, maybe one was an Alabama meat axe. That sounds like something choppy, doesn't it? Whereas an Arkansas toothpick sounds to me like something pointy rather than choppy. So again, I think there's a lot more uh, research to be done there, but some interesting names. But coming back to the previous definition, this is from 1904. So again, we've come later in time, you know, half a century later, more than that. Um, to Pearson's Weekly, 1904, and this explicitly says an Arkansas toothpick is a Bowie knife of a peculiar kind 
where the blade, the blade of which shuts up into the handle. <laughs> so it's a folding Bowie knife. So it does seem that by 1890-1900, the Arkansas toothpick was thought of as a folding Bowie knife. Doesn't seem like, if we go back to the 1830s and 1840s, that that's what the Arkansas toothpick necessarily was back then. Now I find another reference, this is in the Hereford Times, but it's in a section of the newspaper that isn't really telling news, it's actually telling a story, it's telling narrative accounts. And one of the chapters of this particular story is called Bowie Knives, and it says while the discussion was going on, oh, this is 1844, by the way, so it's, it's kind of in the era of the kind of uh, height of, of the Bowie Knife. Um, <clears throat> it says while the discussion was going on, the wagon of a Yankee peddler stopped before the door and the owner entered the room with a box. It now goes on to describe, it's a story basically, so it describes what happens next, but the person is selling Bowie Knives, essentially. And what's interesting is he lists all sorts of knives, um, he lists the blade lengths, for example, a damask blade bowie knife stamped in the thick of the back uh, and a sure defence engraved on the flat. And he describes all of these different knives that the, the merchant <coughs> is selling. Uh, but he gets to one eventually where he says, now here's another Arkansas toothpick. And here it seems that the term Arkansas toothpick is synonymous with the other bowie knives that he has been showing. So in this case, it feels to me, at least in this story, like Arkansas Toothpick isn't describing a specific type of Bowie knife. It's just describing a Bowie knife. It's just a synonymous term. So you could refer to any type of Bowie knife, maybe, as an Arkansas Toothpick. But here's the description. He says, now here's another Arkansas Toothpick. Genuine, straight on the edge. Interesting, straight on the edge. Thick back. Thick back normally means with a, bl a blunt spine. Skew point two-edged. How can I have a thick back and two-edged? I'm confused now. Horny shaft, sorry, horny haft, that means kind of uh, probably staghorn uh, grip, with cockle shell decoration, and silver cross guard, not that uncommon, and embossed silver sheath. Uh, that, that means with uh, silver hilt fittings. That's a real beauty. If I were far west instead of down east, I should partly elect to be finished off with such a weapon as this. Uh, so, you know, great little account. But there it seems that the Arkansas toothpick is just a synonymous term for a Bowie knife of some kind. So here's another comparable example from the Chepstow Weekly Advertiser, 1855. This is another story, it's a narrative account, and it says, um, the very first person who endeavors to try and take away one of my slaves will feel the blade of this Arkansas toothpick, as sure as my name's Dixon. So he's issuing a threat. And so saying, he drew his Bowie knife from its sheath. So there, he has called it an Arkansas toothpick, and the, the author has described it as a Bowie knife. So they are absolutely synonymous in this example from 1855. So here's a fascinating uh, bit of text from the English Chronicle and Whitehall Evening Post, 1837. So this is exactly the period when these were at their height. And it's the, the title of the piece is called Bowie Knives. And it's, um, it says in quotation marks, the legislature of uh, Alabama um, at its recent session passed a law providing that if any person with a bowie knife or any weapon resembling the same shall cut or stab another per another by reason of which cutting or stabbing the party dies, in other words if they kill him with a knife, then and in that case it shall be adjudged to be murder. <laughs> well yeah, and the offender shall suffer as though the killing had been with malice aforethought. So in other words no self-defense defense I guess. A um, uh, New York paper says these uh, Bowie knives, or Arkansas toothpicks as they're called by their admirers, are a species of pocket dirk or poniard. They are admirable weapons for brave bravos and assassins and have of late years been much in request in that free and happy republic, the United States of America, the purpose for which such murderous weapons are carried in a country so vastly free and happy has never been publicly avowed, but it is certain that an Arkansas toothpick is considered throughout young America as an almost more indispensable piece of personal furniture than even a cigar case, and the American journals abound with casualties occasioned thereby. These casualties occur at late hours in the streets, in taverns, and not infrequently even in boarding houses, when men or boys, warmed with strong drink and blinded with cigar smoke, cut short and long and rough argufication with a highly polished bowie knife, alias 
an Arkansas toothpick by dexterous and suddenly pinning the paw of an antagonist to, antagonist to the table with it, or using it in a slashing cut across his deltoid muscle, or puncturing his clavicle, or intersecting it between his ribs. Uh, hitherto, these pinings and puncturings have been considered as manslaughter done in the heat of the moment, and they have been dealt with accordingly. But the evil has increased so rapidly that the legislator, le legislature of Alabama and some of the states also, we believe, are endeavouring to suppress it by new laws as above stated. Uh, blah blah blah. It goes on to say, um, Arkansas toothpicks may now be seen in many cutler's shops' windows in London, ostentatiously ticketed and displayed under the camp compound title of Pocket Dirks or Spanish Knives. So again, we've got another source there from the real period that these are from, really saying that this is the Bowie knife and the the, the um, Arkansas toothpick are basically the same thing in this period. So for now I'm going to wrap it up there, but hopefully that's given you some uh, meat to get your teeth into. Fascinating topic, and as always I love these period newspapers. They give so much detail, so much colour to the to the understanding the period and putting your head into the, into the mindset of the time and the issues and the realities actually of day-to-day -day life uh, in this period and how it was being report reported in the newspapers, more so than most history books, uh, I, I think, unfortunately. So there we have it. In modern times, if someone refers to an Arkansas toothpick, they are almost always referring to a double-edged and more or less symmetrical blade of a dirk-like structure of a type of 19th century knife. If they refer to a bowie knife, or bowie knife, usually they're referring to a clipped point or dropped point asymmetrical knife with a one primary cutting edge. But it seems in period, it is a lot more complicated than that. Uh, it seems that to certainly people in the 1890s, 1900 in Britain, an Arkansas toothpick was actually a folding bowie knife. Uh, it seems that in the 1830s, 40s, 50s, uh, an Arkansas toothpick could just mean any type of bowie knife, or it seems that to knife experts or knife sellers, it's possible that they used different terms for specific blade shapes, and it's possible that the long double-edged or narrower blades were known as Arkansas toothpicks, and then there were other names for the other forms. But more research needs to be done. I think that's a fascinating topic, and maybe it's something I'll try and get to the bottom of more in a future video. But for now, thank you very much to Windless for sending this to me to review. Um, it's a lovely piece, it's really solid, and I'm looking forward to chopping up some stuff with it. I'll stick a link below if you want to get one of these. They're very solidly built and I think very good value, made of good carbon steel blades as well, well heat treated, well tested. Um, but I'll be having some more fun with this and I'm sure it will feature in future videos and I'll at some point I'll do a chopping up of things test with it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you very much for watching the video. If you're not already subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. If you've liked this video, please give me a like. If you want to get more videos, I do more videos on Patreon as well, so all the links are down below. Thanks for watching, and I hope we'll see you back on the channel really soon. I have been Matt Easton, and I'll continue to be. Cheers, folks. Thanks for watching. We've got extra videos on Patreon. Please give our Facebook a like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Cheers, folks.